basketball fans welcome back so this game the kenya Marans, they beat the mozambique team and notch their first win after two brutal back-to-back -back losses against the Sen senegal team and the angolan team the kenya Marans came out on top in this game winning this game 79 62 so let's just talk about this so this game right off the bat you could see the kenya Marans started off well in the first quarter you could see it was a 19-19 tie and in the second you see the mozambique they led in the second but the kenyan runs were just right in the middle but at this at the second half is where the difference was as the kenyan runs put their foot down and they were able to win the second the whole second half both the third and the fourth quarters which was the reason as to why they won this game and this is something that was needed because had they lost this game they will not have been able to win two games in the second window which we're going to talk about that in the next videos to follow so this game was actually quite entertaining and interesting all the way from the start i know senegal and angola they are the powerhouse teams that run through uh, continental basketball in africa mozambique i can say they are much more of a dark horse team they're not a team that has that much expectation but with the right game plan the kenyan runs came in and executed under the tutelage of coach cliff i know he was under fire at the time when the kenyan runs got brutally beat down in two games which was actually quite embarrassing so he, he had to rally the troops and rally the team and also uh put good strategies to be able to get this win against mozambique which was which is quite new it was which was quite needed at the time and this game despite the kenyan runs uh winning this game they were not the most efficient when it came to short selection but they are great in making sure that they are able to get them offensive rebounds and out rebound mozambique was the difference in this game because you could see in the defensive boards you can see the kenya runs they had 39 defensive boards and 23 offensive boards this was actually the most uh def offensive boards of the game and of uh, and at the time we saw coming from the Kenyan runs production when he came on the court with the three games that they played. They looked actually quite small when they played against Angola and Senegal. But in this game, they used their size to their advantage, which they had, but they didn't know how to use it. And Mozambique, they had like a few mistakes that they had. And majority of the games that we have seen, the Kenyan runs get blown out. It's those little things and those mistakes that get exposed, especially when you play against an elite team. I don't consider Mozambique that elite because the way they looked, the way they looked in uh, this game, they didn't look like they were that prepared, and they didn't look like they looked like they overlooked Kenya at the time, and that's the reason as to why they lost. But looking at the game plan and looking at the grit that the Kenyan runs have, even being uh, even with the inefficiency that the Kenyan runs had, they were still able to come out with the win on two point field goals they shot 38 percent from the from the three ball they shot 27 and from the line is where the kenyan runs uh stood supreme as they converted 74 percent of their total free throws which was quite needed and this game was good especially when there were a couple of lead changes that happened in the first quarter in the second quarter there was one lead change but in the third you could see it was just a back and forth game but when it came to the fourth quarter, that's when the Kenyan Rams just pulled away and were able to make good plays that led to the result that we had at the time. And the most shocking thing about this game was the points in the paint. As much as the Kenyan Rams won this game, you could see Mozambique led in points in the paint with 40. So that the Kenyan Rams defense, even despite our rebounding the other team, the, Mo the Mozambique team, Kenyan Rams were not able to have like a very good efficient rim protection that was needed i know that we the kenyan runs had five blocks don't get me wrong five blocks are good but at least try to alter those shots and even alter those looks when you see when you have like good solid defense at the time you are able to at least alter like some shots especially coming from a couple of possessions so this is actually why got a very good performance. You can see fast break, fast break points, 26, 26 points, second chance points, 14. Points from the bench is actually quite good with 25. 
And the Kenyan Morans in this game, they had a biggest lead of 25. And the biggest lead that was recorded was 25. But you could see when it came to the assists, you could see the Kenyan Morans, they dished out the rock pretty well. They had 10 turnovers, so they reduced the number of turnovers. We used to we used to see in the previous two games, they had like a total of 40 plus turnovers. They were able to reduce their turnovers if they took care of the ball well. That was the main result. So going on to a usual suspect. So Victor Odendo and Fahim Juma were listed as DNPs. For they, he played, but he played five minutes, but I feel like it was garbage time. So he didn't actually do anything. He only had two personal fouls, one block, one rebound, and that was it. Then going into like our main contributors of this game, this is the first time you're seeing Grifo play. He had he played 24 minutes, seven points. I can say this was the first time he was getting he sounds that he in there. So it was allowed for him to have such a performance, but he played a heavy minutes at the time. So Coach Cliff really, really believes in this guy to give him this much minutes. But Tyler Ongwai, in this game he had 21 points. He shot he was actually quite inefficient with 16, 16 of 21, 1 of 6 from 3, 5 of 15 on 2 point field goals. But at least he was able to convert. Majority of the points that he was able to get came from the line. And he finished with a double-double of 16, 21 and 16. He had 16 total rebounds this game and 7 assists. He only, If he dished out like 3 more assists, he would have gotten, he would have gotten a triple-double. But that double-double was good. Then we got Ronnie Gombe. He had a double double of his own. Desmono Willie did virtually nothing. He only played one minute. I didn't think his services were needed in this game at all. Okal Koranga also did uh, did very good, especially when he came to the rebounds and just hustling for those loose balls. And he had four blocks. Despite his production offensively or not being the greatest, he was the guy that was that their cleanup guy and getting those assists. And he reduced his fouls. This time he fouled a lot. And also Ronnie Gombe, he still he still managed to foul a lot. But he had four turnovers, which was actually quite not good at all. And Valbuza, he had 15, 16 points. A majority of the players, a couple of the usual, usual suspects, we had four players scoring 10 points or more, which was actually quite good. And we had... It looked like we are we had a cohesive unit at the time, and sometimes I feel like if the Kenyan runs played like this against Senegal and not looked frazzled at, at, at the start, we will have at least made the game much more competitive. Despite even knowing for a fact that Senegal will have beaten the Kenyan runs, if the Kenyan runs were a bit more efficient, this game will have gone would have been very close and will have been very clutch because I believe any good team can be beaten in any game. It's just that the right strategy needs to be implemented. And the legacy players, that is, as I mentioned them, they played heavy minutes here. You could see for him, he didn't play Fidel Okwath. This time he was just starting out to play, but he wasn't given like, you know, he wasn't given like the lights or even the green light or even to even minutes to be able to operate. So majority of the minutes were played again with these guys that were already there on the roster. So... Even heading into like looking at how they shot and it came to just check this one out. You can see in the first quarter when if you look at all if you look at the missed shots, you can see there are more there are more missed shots than made shots. So we're taking a lot of shots and looking at a guy like Hokar, he's not he's not a guy that he's supposed to be trusted to take that shot. A guy like Valbuza, not that sure. You shouldn't be taking those shots here. And that's the reason as to why he's very inefficient when it comes to that. Look at a guy like Telongwa. He's Telongwa is the only person who is supposed to be given green light at the time to be able to take those shots. Real Eric Mutoro, he's the guy that he was the point guard. So he needed to at least capitalize on drawing fouls and getting to the line instead of taking inefficient jumpers could see Tylongwa, he missed the shot there. And that's the reason as to why he shot 6 of 21. So he was not as efficient as you might have thought. And Mutoro, also him, he was 6 of 22, very inefficient, just short chucking in there. And I'm not sure why he has this over insistence of shooting the ball from far away. I really don't get that. Tylongwa, he tried the 3, couldn't get it. Who else? 
after a long while again. I think in the first in the first quarter he wasn't able to he was not able to like you know score. You can see Okal Karanga he missed a two point layup and he couldn't make it. Who else? I don't know, Gombe missed that one. Oh my god, it is it's just this is the shots that you need to make. These ones are allowed. If it's mid range, there's a it, it it's 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 a it's it's near low percentage shot but this when you're playing that position it's a high percentage shot that you must make despite you know even if it doesn't go in you need to at least find a way to draw the fouls but all in all you could see after the first strategy didn't work after the first strategy of the kenya runs didn't work what did they decide to do after the shots were not going in in here in the in mid-range to inside they decided to shoot more threes and this one was something that I, I really I really struggled to understand. Even despite us winning that game, there were many there were many things that went to our side because if Mozambique were not able to uh, they capitalize on the missed shots that we had, and and and, and score on on our mistakes, they would have beaten us the same way Senegal and Angola beat us because Senegal and, and Angola beat the Kenya runs due to the main factor of capitalizing on the Kenya Rams mistakes and the lack of chemistry of the team at the time. So this is the far, this is the third time the Kenya Rams are playing together in a game and the team was just trying to gel in an actual tournament. So you can see Eric Motor just taking the threes again. The dude was just he he was 3 of 16. This man was 3 of 16 just throwing. Dude was just throwing. If you ask him where he's supposed to if you, you even you wonder like was this guy even selecting his shots? Was he setting up? Was he like looking for these shots? Was he shot hunting? Or is he letting the shots come to him? Because this is unacceptable, honestly. Very unacceptable. Not sure why Valentina Kinda was rising up for the three at the time. Telongwa, he missed the jump. He missed the three-pointer. Okal Karanga, he has no business shooting the three. No business shooting the three at all. You can see Griffin, he missed the layup. Victor Bosiria, he missed the layup. Who else? Griffin, he missed it. Valentine, he missed it. Okal Karanga missed it. So this guy has been... <laughs> he was one of it from the field. So, very inefficient at all. But he was just our Dennis Rodman in there. Then in the third, you could see... We stopped shooting from this side. We stopped shooting from the... This other side and he leaned on to one side and my god our short checking it was just a short checking affair and the man that was just jacking up the most shots was eric motor look at this guy he was three of 16 from downtown if the show wasn't working why did he insist on just keep he just kept shooting the man just kept shooting we were very lucky at the time mozambique was not was not picking up on these mistakes and they even got their own revenge and they beat and they blew out kenya in the in the second window which you're gonna look at at the time the coach was the the leadership was under coach liz mills this one was under coach cliff and that's the reason as to why coach cliff was the one that gave these players the green lights to shoot griffin he he, he shot a three who else tell him why he made a three so yeah i mean this was the most inefficient that we had but at least we were able to win the game and that was actually what that was that was the only uh good thing that happened as much as the kenyan runs are not as efficient they were still able to win the ball game and they capitalized on the fact that mozambique was not as good as they were in that game and the rebounding really assisted the kenyan runs winning but when it came to like selecting shots and being efficient in going up on on matter scoring that's the thing that was the biggest undoing and it's the same uh undoing that the kenya runs have right now at the, at the time because there's no clear number one number two number three option everyone's just trying to i don't know if they're trying to prove themselves or they're trying to like convince themselves that they can play but this is what this is the main reason as to why uh, the Kenya runs struggle against Senegal and, and Angola. Even despite you know this win coming you know in the third game, it really uh, it really calls to question the the level of talent that was then on the team, 
and also the level of coaching because you can't have a player shooting 16 attempting 16 threes and only making three and he's still playing heavy minutes 30 north of 30 minutes a game being this inefficient this is this is actually quite unacceptable and i can see this guy almost shot us out of the game not even showing us out of the game in a good way but shooting us making sure that we miss he missed every single majority of the not even every single majority of the threes he was attempting he only three of 16 and half of the shots that were attempted came from him because there are a total of 33 uh three pointers attempt attempted he attempted 16 actually attempted more than every any other player on the squad and he's not a three-point shooter and he's not even a three-point maker so i'm so happy that eric motor is not going to be on the team and uh, that's actually a good thing because this guy if he goes in there he's just going to sh he's just going to like keep shooting and keep missing because he's not a three-point maker and yeah i mean there are a couple of players that are not that are not going to be on this roster i hope uh, I hope to see a couple of new faces in the 2025 of the basket next week and not these legacy players. Legacy player, Griffin, Telongo, I said he quit the team. Desmond Willie is there, but he's not a guy that you can rely on. Not a person you can rely on at all. Eric Mutor, I'm glad he's not going to play. Or Kyle Karanga, he's going to play, but he's not an efficient player. Victor Bosiri, he has, it's unfortunate that this man is na named the captain because there's no, there's nothing that he has done to improve his game. He only plays well when he when he comes to KBF, but when he plays for the Kenyan runs, he's actually quite pathetic and average. And he can't he can't even get like um, this guy can't even get a shot off. He can't even score more than ten points a game. He can't even score more than not even ten, even fifteen points a game. Efficiently, he can't score. Who else? Fidel Okoth. This man has not had a fair shake at all. Hope for him is able to like he's having a career year this year. So hopefully he's able to like get his shot. He's going his help is going to get an opportunity to play because this man has just been blackballed by the Kenya runs. Hopefully he's able to like he's able he's able to like find his rhythm and be able to play. But if you guys like the video, make sure to leave your feedback down in the comments on what you think about this whole situation. My God, uh, this win was needed at the time. If the Kenyan Rams lost this game, man, it would have been game over. So in the next window, there were a couple of changes that happened. Coach Cliff was fired and Coach Liz Mills was hired. And you're going to look at Coach Liz Mills' tenure when she was coaching the Kenyan Rams and the remainder of the Afro basket. Because this first window is a Coach Cliff affair. And I must say... Uh, he did a very pathetic job and there's a reason as to why he's a loser coach and he's somebody that you can't win with he's somebody that cannot be relied upon when it matters and quite frankly he's somebody that shouldn't even be given an opportunity to coach a basketball team even leave, leave alone um even a national team any basketball team there's a reason as to why the man got fired by apr when they notched a ticket to the bal directly so they didn't want him there so KP, I'm seeing that they are trying to experiment with him, and I don't think that he's the right man for the job. I know the KBF cartels are going to go with the person that they want to go with, but honestly, to be quite honest, I don't believe in that guy. I don't think that he's the right man for the job. This is a man who would rather coach the KPA team and not coach the Kenya Rams team, who have games, who has a, who have games this very same day. So. The priorities are wrong. It's all off. And the Kenyan Browns are just yet again going to be set up for failure again. So I'm going to talk about them and what they're recently doing. But in this video, it was actually quite good to see, uh, in retrospect, looking at the Kenyan Browns versus Mozambique matchup statistically and how uh, the players were able to carry themselves in there. But my God, still, there, there was a lot of work to be there was the work to be done and a lot needed to be established moving forward. But if you guys like the video, make sure to leave your feedback down in the comments on what you think. And also, please be sure, you know, follow me on NBA Kenya. Hit the follow button if you're watching this on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to you know, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to get notified 
and smash that like button helps me out and leave in the comments get active on the comments tell me what you guys think this is all based on my opinion and also looking at the star sheet and um i'm out peace